This is the new 2023 Chevy Corvette Z06, and it's truly amazing. It has a naturally aspirated V8 with 670 horsepower. It does zero to 60 in under three seconds, and pricing is surprisingly reasonable, not that you will ever be able to get one at sticker. This is the most thrilling Chevy Corvette ever made, and today I'm going to review it and show you all of the quirks and features. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some fantastic sales lately, including this BMW M2 competition sold for $56,500. This wonderful AMG E63 station wagon sold for just under $50,000. And this this fantastic Cadillac CTS V wagon brought just under $40,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with daily auctions, great selection, and free listings. Check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features, the new C8 Z06, with a little overview of exactly what this car is and some of the specs and details. So, obviously, this is the high-performance version of the new C8 Corvette, but the C8 is pretty high-performance itself. Well, this is a lot more. C8 has about 500 horsepower. This has 670 horsepower. Massive number, and the result is massive performance performance. Zero to 60 in the twos, high two second range, quarter mile in 10 and a half seconds at 130 miles an hour, according to Car and Driver. This thing runs stock mid tens. Absolutely incredible. And the powertrain is pretty incredible too. It's a 5.5 liter naturally aspirated flat plane crank V8, an exotic car engine with no turbocharging or supercharging. Get to this number, just a big old cool engine. Now, this is usually where I'd rev it up for you so you can hear it, but unfortunately, this is one of those stupid cars that won't let you rev past 3,000 RPM if it's stopped, so you'll just have to hear it when I drive it later, but it sounds amazing. Take my word for it. Great sound, great performance. It really is incredible, except for the fuel economy. 12 miles per gallon in the city, 19 miles per gallon on the highway for a total of 14 miles per gallon in combined city and highway driving, according to the EPA. And then again, that's not not why you're buying this, and probably nobody cares about that. But people do care about this. This is probably the last of its kind. Chevy has already announced there's going to be some sort of plug-in electrified Corvette coming on its way. And you have to imagine that the electrified Corvette lineup will only expand as we get further and further into the EV era. I'm not going to say this is the last naturally aspirated V8 high-performance Corvette, but it very well could be. Next up, let's talk pricing. This is the window sticker for the new Z06, the Monroney label as they call it. This car starts around $115,000 with shipping, and this particular Z06 is equipped to just under $150,000, but frankly, discussions of pricing, at least right now, are <laughs> laughable because nobody is going to get one of these cars at the sticker price. Demand is incredibly high, and I've heard of Z06s trading for $100,000 over the MSRP because of the laws of supply and demand. So this car has a pretty reasonable price tag given the performance level, the fact that it could be the end of an era, but no one's going to be able to get it for that price tag, at least not easily and at least not soon. Now, this particular Z06 is technically a coupe model. I say technically because it has a removable roof panel that you can take off and then you have a wide open space above you like a convertible, but there is also an actual convertible version of this car that's available. The convertible version of the Z06 starts around $7,500 more than the coupe, and truthfully, with its roof down, you have about the same amount of 
open roof as you do in the coupe with the hardtop off. The difference is really just ease. In this car, to get the roof off, you gotta undo a couple of latches and then lift the roof off physically, which is heavy and cumbersome, and then stow it in the trunk. With the convertible, there's just a button on the door that you press and the roof goes down. Worth 7,500 bucks, I don't know. It certainly will be to some. But anyway, next up onto the quirks and features of the C8 Z06. Now, obviously I've already reviewed the regular C8 Corvette. That was one of my most viewed videos ever. And I did a full tour and walk around of the Z06 back when it was first announced before I could drive it. So I'm not gonna go over everything here, but I will touch on the big stuff to show you the cool quirks and features, starting with the fact that this car looks pretty much insane. On the outside, bright orange really grabs your attention, but also huge wing, front splitter. This looks like a serious performance car. Now, some of this stuff is not standard on the Z06. A lot of its crazy look is thanks to the carbon fiber aero package, which is a $10,500 option. And it includes that massive wing back there. They call it the high wing and it's huge and it's carbon fiber and it's certainly distinctive and performancy. That package also includes the front splitter, which is another massive piece of carbon fiber that gives this car a more aggressive look. Again, not standard in Z06, but you get that package, you get this carbon fiber splitter that really distinguishes this from a regular C8. Now, beyond that, in terms of options that stand out on the outside of this car, the roof panel is another. It is also in carbon fiber, and it is not part of that carbon fiber aero package. To get the carbon fiber roof panel, you gotta spend another $2,500. And speaking of carbon stuff, let's talk brakes. This car has the optional carbon ceramic brakes, which will increase its braking capabilities on the racetrack by reducing brake fade. Those carbon ceramics are $8,500 extra, some pricey options for a pricey car. Now, one cool feature that this Z06 doesn't have, a little disappointed about, is carbon fiber wheels, which are available on the C8 Z06, and they dramatically reduce the weight at each corner of the car, but they are expensive. $10,000 for carbon fiber wheels, or $12,000 if you want the wheels unpainted. They're charging more money <laughs> for no paint, but that's what you want because then you can see the carbon wheels and they look incredibly cool. This car doesn't have them, but they are available. But beyond the optional stuff, there are a lot of other changes to the Z06 that help set it apart on the outside from the standard C8. Up front, you have a completely different front fascia than a regular C8. It's sportier looking with larger openings, more aggressive angles intended to help set this car apart from the regular car. On the side, probably the easiest way to tell apart the Z06 from the standard model. Well, for one thing, the Z06 badge, but in case that's been removed or you can't tell, this trim panel on the side is completely different on the Z06. It's larger, it's longer, it has a totally different shape than what you see in the regular C8, which you can see here. Totally different look on the side that really helps distinguish the Z06. And frankly, the Z06 is wider. This bulges out further. Hard to tell if you're not looking at the cars next to each other, but the Z06 does have a bulgy, wide side air intake panel here to bring even more air into the engine than the standard car. And the Z06 is more aggressive in back as well. For one thing, these panels here below the brake lights are wider and longer in the Z06, distinctive from the regular C8, but probably the biggest change back here is the quad exhaust. The standard C8 has quad exhaust, as you can see, but they're placed over in the corners on the sides of the rear end. And the Z06, four exhaust pipes right in the middle. <laughs> That's a real distinguishing feature compared to the standard C8 for the Z06. And like I said, I would love to rev for you, but you can't rev it past 3000 when it's parked, which is very annoying, but I can't wait to drive it when we can hear it. Now, a couple of interesting Easter eggs worth noting on the outside of this car. For one thing, the rear glass. If you look at the upper part, you can see it fades from like black trim to glass, but that fade isn't just anything. It's little Corvette logos fading from small to large, which is kind of cool. Now, at the base of that rear glass, you can see it's says like 70th anniversary of the Corvette. I assume this will be on all 2023 models, a nice distinguishing feature for the 23s if you can see the back glass. And speaking of little Easter eggs on the glass, at the base of the windshield on the driver's side, it says Team Corvette to remind you who built this car. <laughs> 
And next, we climb inside the new Z06, where there are surprisingly few changes in here compared to the standard car. Open up the door, and you have Z06 on the door sill, as you can see, gets you excited, and get behind the wheel, and you have Z06 at the base of the steering wheel, so you're having some special experience. Worth pointing out, though, this steering wheel is the same one from the regular car, weirdly shaped, and that's one of the quirks of the C8, this bizarre wheel, now with Z06 at the bottom. Now, when you sit down in this car, you do sit in tight sport bucket seats that help grip you, keep you in place on the track, but these seats are available on the standard C8 as well. There are options on that car and there are options on this car. They call them the GT2 bucket seats and they're pretty great. Now, aside from that, the Z06's interior, not really that distinctive from the standard C8, but that means it has all of the interesting quirks of the C8's interior. The most unusual of which is probably this giant row of controls in the center of the interior. These are your climate controls, and it's just a long row of switches and buttons. At the top, you have a temperature control, and you also have a temperature control at the bottom, as you can see. The top is for driver temperature, the bottom is for passenger, and that trend kind of continues throughout these buttons. You got heated and cooled seats, top for driver, bottom for passenger, and then the stuff in the middle applies to both. This is a very odd way <laughs> to display the climate controls, but that's what they've done in this car. Also unusual here is the gear selector. As you can see, not your typical arrangement. To get into drive, you pull back on this little D lever. To get into reverse, you pull back on the R level. Park and neutral are buttons in between them and then M for manual at the bottom, kind of strange. Also kind of strange is the dial to the right of the gear selector. You're thinking that's the infotainment system control. No, it's actually the drive mode dial. You twist this large central dial and its only function is to change the drive mode. Now, you have several different drive mode options in this car and when you change them, it also changes the gauge cluster display, which is cool. The regular mode, which they call tour, has a fairly standard gauge display, as you can see, but you turn the giant center dial and get into sport, and then the gauges change to look like this sportier, more aggressive, more red, giving you more performance information. The best one, though, is if you go into track. Twist the dial one more time. Now you're in track mode, and the gauge cluster totally changes. You have your RPMs displayed huge at the very top. Your gear is now prioritized instead of your speed, since your speed doesn't really matter on the racetrack. And you have a few little widgets over to the side that give you important information you might want to know on the track. I especially like that it shows tire temperature here. It doesn't give exact readouts, but it does say cold to let you know the tires are still cold, which is obviously very useful info on the track. Nice to see it incorporated into the gauge cluster. Now, worth pointing out, there is one more special drive mode that is not contained in your central dial, and that is Z mode, which is accessed on a button on the steering wheel. You can see here it says Z, and if you push it, it goes into this special Z mode, which is essentially just a configurable drive mode that you can fully adjust. The thinking here is that instead of having you twist the dial to go into your individual mode, just tap the steering wheel and boom, you're in your custom mode in a heartbeat. I also love the fact that the Z on the button lights up when you press it, and then it turns off when you get out of Z mode. That's a very cool little touch, instead of just a little light in the gauge cluster. But anyway, other quirks and features in this car. For one thing, the glove box over on the passenger side. To open it, there's a little button between the climate vents over here. You push it and it opens, which is kind of strange. Also unusual in terms of buttons is getting out of this car. You don't have a traditional door handle. Instead, a button. You press it and an electronic popper releases the door and then you open it the rest of the way and climb out. Now, in case the electronic popper fails, you do have a manual door release as a backup. It's located on the floor. You just pull it and then it mechanically opens up the door, no popper involved. And by the way, on the subject of the key getting in and out of this car, just a standard Corvette key, as you can see. Nothing special for the Z06. Got a couple Corvette logos, a lot of buttons. You do have a remote starter, but nothing too different from the standard C8. Next up, another nice detail in this interior is the mirror situation. You can see right now, this is a regular mirror, but if you flip this switch on the bottom, it becomes a camera. More and more cars are starting to go to these camera mirrors, and I especially like it in sports cars where visibility is a little compromised, but the camera, it's not really compromised 
against it all. And you can see the mounting position for the camera is here, pretty far in the middle of the car actually, but it does its job and you can see behind you quite well with this camera mirror. Now also worth pointing out in the center of this car, between the seats by the backrest, you can see a badge that says Corvette 70, 1953 to 2023. Again, I suspect this is gonna be an all 2023 model cars to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Corvette. But anyway, next up, a few highlights of the infotainment system in this car. For one thing, just the basics, it's very easy to use, like in other General Motors vehicles. Simple, responsive, intuitive, you swipe your finger, it moves. It all works pretty much exactly like you would expect. A couple of cool things about the infotainment specifically in this car. For one thing, it has the performance data recorder. You can go in here and turn on the performance data recorder feature and record your racetrack laps and set them to time. So you can watch the time and the lap over later with each other so you can see, oh, I didn't get that corner fast enough or whatever, and compare your lap times in videos, which is a pretty neat idea. Worth pointing out in the gauge cluster, you also have a few displayable performance metrics. Over here, you can measure your zero to 60 time, which is kind of neat, and you can see your G-forces and a few other performance things. So some performance measuring tools in this car's screens. One other thing I love about the infotainment screen is the easy access to the camera. You have a button here in the center that says front with a camera, you press it, and it pulls up the front camera instantly. That's really important for a car like this because it's super low and that front splitter carbon fiber expensive to replace. So you wanna be able to easily see your front splitter and where it is without having to go into some menu screen for cameras. So having that button there makes it really easy to park on a high curb and not hit anything. Now, final thing worth pointing out about the interior in this car, the materials. It's fine in here, but not like incredibly nice. Not as nice as European rivals or some really high dollar sports cars, Porsche, Ferrari, that sort of thing. Again, nice in here, but not amazing. And there are a few pieces of fit and finish that just really don't look all that great. For instance, the turn signal stock and the windshield wiper stock feel so radically cheap, like they just got pulled out of the cheapest Chevy they could find. Also, this seam lines up in a weird way with this other seam in the center console. This gap of the door panel looks a little strange. You get a few of those things throughout this interior. It's nice in here, but it's not really expensive luxury performance car nice. That's never mattered that much to Corvette buyers, and it may not be a big deal here, but it's worth pointing out when you get into the $150,000 price point. And next up, we move into the back of the new Z06, underneath this rear panel, where you have two important things back here, a cargo area and the engine. I'm gonna start quickly with the cargo area. Yes, this can fit the roof panel. I took it off and put it in there when I reviewed the C8 originally. It does fit, but it requires some special placement and lining up and finagling, and it steals all your cargo room when it's in there, so you gotta be real sure you want the roof off. Now, this cargo area also will hold a set of golf clubs which is important to Corvette buyers, of course. The size of the cargo area is great. It adds practicality to this car, and it's nice to see, although I've always felt that that's the one thing that kind of messes up the C8's design. You can clearly tell on the outside, the car is a little wider and bigger in back than it probably should be, presumably to accommodate this cargo area back here. But I still think the C8 looks amazing even with that, and the practicality is nice. Now, the engine, like I mentioned before, naturally aspirated V8 flat plane crank, 670 horsepower. I'm not going to go through it all again, but it is awesome. Mid-mounted, of course, like all new C8 Corvettes, and you have a little badge, a little plaque from the person who built this engine, as you can see, which adds a little pride to the whole thing, gives it a little personal touch like some modern performance cars have. Now, a couple of interesting things about this rear panel. For one thing, closing it, you don't have to slam it down. There's a little hole in the back for your fingers. You push it down, and if it gets close enough, it automatically soft closes, so you don't slam it down, it will electronically latch itself, which is actually a pretty cool idea because this panel is so big, you don't want to be constantly slamming it. Electronic latching is better. Now, one thing I think is really interesting, the rear spoiler is not mounted on this movable rear panel, but rather fixed on the car itself. And look at the tolerance between this rear panel and the spoiler. Very, very slim. You don't want things to get off kilter here. They barely pass each other as it is. Now, one annoyance of having the rear spoiler here is it means when you load stuff into the trunk, you got to load it over the spoiler, which adds a little bit of risk. You might damage it, you might scratch it. You can see the spoiler bend 
bends down in the center to make loading easier, but it's still pretty high up and you gotta lift stuff way past the spoiler. And I could see some getting damaged lifting things into the cargo area. Now it is worth pointing out, this car also has a second cargo area, which is up front. You do have a front trunk and it's reasonably large, not huge, but enough space for some extra stuff, especially if you have your roof panel in your rear cargo area, you got some space where you can store stuff in front. And you have this little button to escape the front trunk, just in case someone ever tries to kidnap you in their C8 Z06. And also, you have to be very small, <laughs> but it's there. All right, driving the new C8 Z06. I am so excited for this. I filmed a tour of this car back when Chevrolet first showed it off a year ago, and I've been looking forward to driving it ever since, and I'm so thrilled that I finally am. Unfortunately, Chevy has given me this car for a few days, and it's raining, which is insane. Number one, it never rains in San Diego, but number two, when I filmed the original C8, my first review, it was raining then too. So something about me in C8s in rain. Although, about a year and a half ago, I rented a C8 on Turo in Florida, and I had it for the whole weekend, drove it a ton, no rain that weekend, I really fell in love with it. And that's kind of where I'm coming from. Like, I really love the C8, so I'm curious how the Z06 improves upon that. So, here's the answer. First thing is obvious, the moment you drive this car, the moment you get into it and drive it, this car is pretty focused, pretty hard-edged. It's a serious car. And I mentioned that uh, for two reasons. Number one, the regular C8 is already a pretty serious sports car. Like it is very capable, pretty impressive performance. Like it's really something, but this is a totally different level. It is rough riding, it is loud, the suspension is harsh, the suspension is focused. You gotta, you gotta be ready for that if you buy this car. And I say that especially because I think a lot of Z06 owners in the past, have not really been in that camp. They've bought it because they wanted the coolest Corvette or whatever. And I think this isn't the time to do that. This car is the coolest Corvette, but it's also an insane performance car, rough riding. If you're just looking for the coolest Corvette and you buy this, you might regret just how rough and focused this car is. It really is a very serious sports car. Now, let's talk about a few other things. Uh, for one thing, I, I can't, I can't not, because he couldn't hear it earlier, we gotta talk sound, which is amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. things to love about this car. So let's talk about that sound for a second. Flat plane crank V8 sounds absolutely incredible. Really, really amazing at all RPMs pretty much everywhere. Another cool thing about the engine, in addition to the sound, which really is a highlight of this car, another cool thing is it's not supercharged or turbocharged, this powertrain. And that's unusual in the common, the modern era where so many cars are. And the reason I find that especially cool here is by not turbocharging, you're kind of taking us back to a different era with with the way an engine feels. And the power delivery is so linear. Um, the torque delivery at pretty much any RPM is there. It's not like a lot of new turbocharged performance cars where you gotta gear down a couple times and go get the power. And usually that's fine because they're dual clutches and you can do it easily, but in this car you don't have to. There's always torque, there's always power because of this naturally aspirated engine. And it kind of feels like a fun throwback to a different era. And it's a very, very special thing to be a part of and to drive because very few cars are like this anymore. Now, acceleration, next thing to talk about, absolutely brutal, unbelievable, incredible acceleration. Zero to 60 in the high twos, it feels every bit that fast. I've done that zero to 60 time before in some electric cars. Um, this, Those cars feel even more insane because of the way that they deliver power which is like instant at the very beginning, power just is thrown at you. This car has to build it, but it still feels unbelievably fast to a level that's almost hard to describe compared to basically any other car. Handling is also fantastic. The precision of the steering is unbelievable. It's pretty much on the level of performance of supercars. This, whether you wanna call this a supercar or not, it certainly feels like one when you're driving it, but I know it's not gonna have like the production rarity and the brand name and all that, but, but it has the sound, it has the feel, it has the immediacy of the steering. 
The steering precision is unbelievable in this car. Incredibly fast, changes directions tremendously quickly. I drive a lot of sports cars that try to emulate that steering precision that supercars have. And this is maybe one of the very first that I've encountered that like really has supercar level steering precision. And it's not just that, it's the handling too. This car is absolutely stuck to the ground and it performs unbelievably well around hard corners. It doesn't blink an eye when you go hard. It feels stable, it feels settled. It makes you feel like you know what you're doing. I think some people might get into trouble there because they will only find out what they, what they don't know once they are in a hard corner going fast but this is a really, really capable car that gives you that feeling of confidence. Now, as for drawbacks of this car, my only one really relates to the pricing. Compared to a regular C8, I'm not entirely sure that it's worth the massive price jump. Now, now where Chevy has it priced, I think is right, which is like a C8 is like 90 grand or 70 grand, and this is like 110, 150. But where the market has it priced, I'm not so sure. I think that these cars are gonna be trading for 50, 75, $100,000 over sticker. And given the excellent performance of the standard C8, I just have trouble getting there mentally. I'm just not sure that this car is that much better than a regular C8. Given where Chevy has them priced, I think it's totally reasonable reasonable, but, and especially because regular C8s are starting to come down in price in the used market, you can pick one up 70 to 90,000 pretty easily. But given where the market will transact, I'm not sure this car really justifies that price point. So there you go. That's my take on the C8 Z06, a truly unbelievable performance car, one of the all-time greats. Uh, I love it. And it's going to be too focused and too hard-edged for some Corvette buyers. But if you want the best, this is super car performance from a Corvette. And so that's the new 2023 Chevy Corvette Z06. This is an amazing car with amazing performance and well, amazing everything. And I'm thrilled that I had the chance to review it. And now it's time to give the new Z06 a Doug store. And the Doug score is here, 66 out of 100, which places the new Z06 here against some rivals. It does exactly what you might think. Amazing weekend score, beating out the new 911 Carrera S that came in GT4, the Nissan GTR Nismo, and the regular C8 Corvette. But the daily score is lower because the new Z06 is a compromised car with a harsh ride and technology that's decent but not amazing. Overall, I really think this is the best Corvette yet. Just be prepared for a focused car with a pretty stiff market price. Price tag.